In this video we're going to take our first look at a topic called the Marbus Theorem and it's one of the main topics in second year and further maths. Okay? What the Marbus Theorem tells us is that if we have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n, that's equivalent to cos of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Now we could just jump in and start using solving equations and, and messing about with this, but before we do let's just take a brief sort of step back and try and visualize what this tells us because it's an important part of our course actually is to not just be able to do the algebra it's to be able to understand the geometry of the complex numbers okay so remember z if z is cos theta plus i sine theta that's essentially what we're saying there is we've got a complex number now the magnitude is one because remember if we write it as r cos theta plus i sine theta, which is r e to the i theta. That's just a form you can write a complex number in, but if we're just looking at cos theta plus i sine theta, the r value is, is 1, which basically means our complex number is somewhere around a circle with a radius of 1. Now, remember from last year, two things we need to know about complex numbers. When we multiply them, so if I did z multiplied by z, also known as z squared, when we multiply two complex numbers, we multiply the magnitudes. So 1 times by 1, the magnitude would still be 1. The arguments, the angles, we add the angles. So think about what would happen if I worked out cos theta plus i sine theta squared. I'm not going to expand it. We'll do that later. Let's just try and think about what would happen. So I know that... The magnitudes would be multiplied, well 1 times by 1 stays as 1. I know the arguments are added, so if the arguments of z is theta, the arguments of z is also theta. If I add those two arguments together, if we've got theta plus theta, z squared would move around the circle and the argument would be now 2 theta. So hopefully we can see that that would be equivalent to the magnitude is still 1 but because the arguments have been added it would be equivalent to cos of 2 theta and i sine of 2 theta because that new complex number z squared has an argument of 2 theta. You can keep going like if I did z cubed you'd add the arguments again and then and the new argument would be 3 theta so before we get into the algebra just try and visualize what this is telling us it should be intuitive when you think about it like this like if we raise a complex number to a power of n we know that we add the arguments so it, it should follow that the, the argument would be n theta and that would work for any power of n okay so let's look at example four um, it says expressing cartesian and exponential form and we've got cos pi over 6 minus i sine pi over 6, and it's being cubed. Now, we don't really want to keep this bracket out if we can help it. Um, and one thing that we have to be very careful of, actually, on this first question, is that the Marbus theorem, and this works for cos theta plus i sine theta, and our first question is actually cos theta minus i sine theta. So an important property that we should know about um, cos theta and sine theta, if I do cos of minus theta, that would be equivalent to cos theta. If we do sine of minus theta, that would be equivalent to minus sine theta. So the first thing we have to actually have to do is to spot that because that's a minus, um, we have to be a little bit careful. We can't apply the Marvis theorem straight away. Instead, we could think about this as cos of minus pi over 6 plus i sine of minus pi over 6 cubed. And now we've got it in the form cos theta plus i sine theta. It just so happens that the theta is negative, but that's fine. Okay. So if we apply the Marvis theorem, we can multiply instead of expanding, we can multiply inside. So that would be equivalent to cos of minus 3 pi over 6 plus i sine of minus 3 pi over 6. So at this point we can use the calculator, but try and save yourself a bit of time. <coughs> think about the property for the cos graph, like minus pi over 2, think about what cos looks like. 
you know, minus pi over 2, we know that we're going to get 0 for this. So sine minus pi over 2, we're going to get minus 1. So that becomes 0 plus i times minus 1, also known as minus i. Okay? Um, and you, I think we should be familiar with this before, but if you're not, just think about the symmetry of the graph. And we'll see this a lot in, in second year when we're working with trigonometry. So if we want to write it in exponential form as well, there's a couple of ways of thinking about it, but we could, I suppose we could do it from this form. Draw a sketch. Minus i would be there, wouldn't it? So the argument would be minus pi over 2 and the magnitude of the distance would be 1. We already knew that the magnitude was 1, if you think about it, because this complex number here, the, the, the r value is 1 at the beginning, so when you cube it, it's going to stay on that circle, isn't it? It's just like we're moving around the circle. Okay. Another way to think about it as well, this complex number here, the original one, the magnitude is 1, the argument was minus pi over 6. So if our argument was minus pi over 6, if we cube it, we'd be moving that way, 3 times, minus pi over 6, minus pi over 6 minus pi over 6, which is why we end up at minus i with an argument of minus pi over 2. Okay, So the argument, uh, sorry, the, the exponential form would be equivalent to 1e to the minus pi over 2i. Obviously we just write e to the minus pi over 2i. So we've got two more. Um, it's up to you, you might want to pause and have a go. Yeah, but I will go through them, obviously. Uh, we've got this 3 plus i all to the power of 10, and we want to write it in Cartesian and exponential form. Um, if we wanted to apply the Marvis theorem, I suppose you should, because that's the topic that we're looking at. We could think about root 3 plus i. Again, the sketch is really important. Root 3 that way. 1 that way. So a little bit of trigonometry, that r value would be 2. And if we root 3 across and we're 1 up, that angle there would be pi over 6. Or you can just use tan inverse if you're not sure, or sine inverse. But in an exponential form, um, we could actually, that's not like an exponential form, let's write it in this form first and we'll apply the Marmus theorem. So I know that root 3 plus i is equivalent to. 2 cos pi over 3, no, sorry, cos pi over 6. Give myself enough space here. So root 3 plus i is equivalent to 2 cos pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. Because the argument's pi over 6, and the cos theta would be this part, the sin theta would be this part. The magnitude is 2. We could also equivalently think about it in exponential form. To be honest, if I wasn't, if I wasn't demonstrating this identity, I would probably do this in exponential form because it's easier. We could write it as 2e to the pi over 6i, and if we raise it all, power of 10, it's equivalent to raising this all to the power of 10, isn't it? So apply the power to both, that would be 2 to the power of 10. E, when you do this, you multiply, so that would be 10 lots of pi over 6. Okay, so that's it in exponential form. But let's think about it using the Marvis theorem.
we raise this to the power of 10. We're raising all of this to the power of 10. So it would be 2 to the power of 10. And if that bracket was raised to the power of 10, remember the marvellous theorem tells us if you've got cos plus i sine theta to the power of 10, what's the power of n? We can just multiply inside by the angle. So that would be 2 to the power of 10. Cos of 10 by over 6. Plus i sine of 10 pi over 6. And I suppose if we do want it in Cartesian form, I'll just, just let me use the calculator because the numbers might get a bit large here. So 2 to the power of 10 would be 1024. Cos of 10 pi over 6 is a half, and sine of 10 pi over 6 is minus root 3 over 2. So we'd get. 512 minus 512 root 3 i. Okay. Okay, so for the last one, we've got 1 plus i to the power of 10, all divided by 4i. If we start with the sketch and think about the triangle, 1 plus i, so that angle there is pi over 4. And if we do Pythagoras, that distance is root 2. So we've got root 2 e to the pi over 4 i, all to the power of 10, divided by 4 i. <coughs> now, if we're going to do in exponential form, I suppose we should write 4i in exponential form as well. So if you think about what that would look like. Oops. <laughs> List axis ever. 4i is up there. It's positive and it's imaginary. So that distance is 4. And the argument is pi over 2. So we're dividing by 4e the pi over 2 i. So if we do root 2 to the power of 10, so that's like 2 to the half to the power of 10, so 2 to the power of 5, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Multiply indices, power times a power, so 10 pi over 4 would become 5 pi over 2. And we're dividing that by 4 e to the power of 2. So 32 divided by 4 would give us 8. And when we divide, we subtract. So that would be e. 5, five halves minus 1 half. So that would be 4 halves. Also known as 2 pi. Now I suppose you have to be a little bit careful here, actually, because if it does say right in exponential form, maybe it's a, maybe it's a slightly sort of poorly written question or maybe just like a little bit of a red herring what we'd have to realise here right you might lose a mark if you left it like this what we've got here the magnitude is 8 the argument is 2 pi now if I turn to an argument of 2 pi guess what I'm, 2 pi is one full rotation I am back on this real line here so the, the actual answer is just 8 because e to the 2 pi i is equivalent to e to the 0, which is equivalent to 1. Alright, so actually I've got it in exponential form and in Cartesian form, it is just a real number, and the number is 8. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. There's a, there's a fair amount to take in there, isn't there? But like, it's really important that we practice this because there's different forms of complex numbers. Um, and the link between them all and the geometry and thinking about the diagrams, it's, it's really, really useful for us to try and get our head around this. Alright, thank you.